Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the next doc. Well, actually, this is the next doc too. And before we get started here, I do want to mention that this is not a laptop, hence the name Next Doc. This is basically a docking station with a built-in 13-inch screen, 6800 milliamp hour battery, HDMI in, USB Type-C, DisplayPort in, some more USB Type-C ports, a full-size USB 3.0, SD card reader, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And you might be thinking, what can you use this for? Well, there's tons of devices that you can connect to this, like Samsung phones that support DeX. There's also some Huawei phones and LG phones that support kind of a desktop mode. Game consoles, single board computers, pretty much anything with an HDMI output can be connected to this. And my use case scenario with this is mainly the Raspberry Pi and Samsung DeX running from a Galaxy S10 or my Tab S6. So inside of the box, as you can see, we have tons of different connections. We have a 60 watt USB-C quick charger, a USB Type-C smartphone cable, HDMI to HDMI, HDMI to micro HDMI adapter, micro USB to micro USB-C adapter, and there's a few others in here like the adapters for your wall outlet in your country. So basically it comes with everything you need to get pretty much any HDMI enabled device connected to the next dock without any issues. And inside of here, we have the next dock itself. As you can already see through this plastic, it definitely resembles a laptop, and that's really what they were going for. Construction of the next dock 2 is top notch. This definitely feels premium when you pick it up. We have a full aluminum outer shell, full size HDMI, three USB Type C ports, and one of them does support DisplayPort N, a full size USB 3.0 port, SD card reader, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Overall, this thing looks absolutely stunning. I mean, it definitely resembles a MacBook. We have this giant trackpad here that works amazingly with Android and the Raspberry Pi. An edge-to-edge, -edge, full-size backlit keyboard, 13.3-inch IPS display at 1080. Built-in 51 watt-hour battery, quad speaker setup, and like I mentioned, the keyboard is backlit. So if you're working with this at night or a dimly lit space, you'll have no trouble finding the keys you need. So we have a 13.3 inch IPS display at 1920 by 1080. This is FHD resolution at 16 by nine. A built-in 7.6 volt, 6,800 milliamp hour battery, one USB-C 3.0 with display port, one full size HDMI 1.4 port on the side, quad one watt speakers, one USB type C PD charging port, one USB type C 3.0, one USB type A 3.0, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and our micro SD card reader. So like I've said, this is basically just a dock. We have a screen, a keyboard, a trackpad, and some extra IO. You need another device to even really do anything with this. So in this video, I'm gonna test out a few different Android devices. We're gonna move over to the Raspberry Pi 4, and I'll see what else I can dig out and connect to this. So first up, we have the Galaxy S10, and this supports DeX mode, which is something that I'm a real big fan of. I've done several videos of it on my channel. DeX is supported on the Galaxy S8 on up. And to tell you the truth, a lot of people nowadays, their only PC really is the phone they have in their pocket. And if you have one of these Samsung phones, all you really need to do is plug it in with a single USB Type-C cable. It's going to start charging the unit as soon as we turn the next dock on. And I do have DeX mode enabled, so it's just going to pop right up on the main screen. And the Galaxy S10 here has the Snapdragon 855 with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, plus a micro SD card slot. I mean, this is a powerful little setup once you add the next dock to it, and most people could get by with something like this. So we're just using that single USB Type-C cable plugged right in. It's charging the phone as well as displaying DeX right on the next dock through that single cable. Everything's working great. We have keyboard functionality and trackpad functionality. I'm going to go ahead and get this camera a little closer to the screen and we'll just test out some web browsing, YouTube video playback, and a little bit of native Android gaming. And by the way, the trackpad does work with gestures inside of DeX, so it's pretty easy to navigate. I'm just going to go ahead and open up Chrome if you want to do some web browsing on something like this. I think it's a lot easier with a keyboard and a trackpad. Plus, we're now using a 13.3 inch screen instead of the smaller screen on the phone itself. We'll just head over to a website real quick. You can scroll by using two fingers. Keyboard works great inside of Android and DeX. Just load up a web page. I mean, yeah, it definitely feels just like a laptop, especially with this DeX interface here. I mean, everything you really need to do in everyday life online can be done with DeX or even just Android itself. We'll head over to YouTube real quick. And keep in mind that Huawei and LG have their own similar desktop interface like DeX, but in my opinion, this is just much more polished. They've been working on this for a while. 
So here's a 1080p video playing at 60 FPS. And sound is coming from the next stock speakers. You can actually have it set up to just have sound coming out of your phone while you're using DeX, but I enabled it so we had that quad speaker set up, and it's actually really nice. But one thing I have noticed with YouTube and the next dock running through DeX is it's a lot lower than all the other applications that I've tested. I've tested Netflix, Hulu, and some native Android gaming, and those just come out much louder from the next dock speakers than YouTube does. But it does work, and it's a pretty enjoyable experience consuming media with the next dock. This 13.3 inch IPS display looks great, and even though it's 1080p, it is super sharp also wanted to get into a little bit of native Android gaming. Now remember, everything is running from the Galaxy S10 here. This is Asphalt 9, and I'm using the Xbox One S controller connected over Bluetooth to the phone. So yeah, this is working great, and it looks beautiful on this screen. I mean, I love playing these games on a bigger screen, and in the past I have done a video with a portable monitor and Samsung DeX. But on those devices, we don't have a built-in trackpad, keyboard, and extra ports to add different accessories to our phone. So what we were just using is strictly for Samsung devices, that was Samsung DeX. But if you have a phone that does support HDMI out over USB or it has an HDMI port built in, you can also connect it to this dock. And what I have here is the Asus Rogue Phone 2. This is an amazing little gaming phone with a Snapdragon 855 Plus and 8 gigs of RAM. As you can see here, we're in vertical mode, but you can set it up to do auto rotation. When we open up an app, it will auto rotate. Here's PPSSPP and I can play all of my favorite emulators on this bigger 13.3 inch screen. So phones that don't have a dedicated desktop mode but do support HDMI over USB Type-C or have a built-in HDMI port will work with the next dock just fine, and the keyboard and trackpad works right over this USB Type-C cable with this phone also. And if you check out the next dock website, you can find a full list of Android devices that do support HDMI out. But I gotta say, one of my favorite use case scenarios for the next dock is using it with single board computers. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 here in the official case. I do have it overclocked. And they do send a split cable with a full size USB, micro USB, and USB type C on one end. But with the Raspberry Pi 4, if you add this line to your config.txt, you can actually just use the included HDMI cable for video to the next dock screen and a single USB type C cable to power it up and let the Pi communicate with the keyboard and trackpad. Now with this setup here, I just have a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 running Raspbian. It's all up to date and I've added that line to the config.txt on the SD card. So this is the only way I need to set this up to get the keyboard, trackpad, all the ports, and the display on the next dock to work with the Pi 4. And at least for me, using the next dock with the Raspberry Pi 4 has actually been a blessing because usually I have to whip out a keyboard and everything like that, but right now I just have two cables connected and I have a full laptop interface here that I can use with pretty much any operating system that you can install on the Raspberry Pi. And by the way, I did test this with a couple other single board computers like the Odroid N2 and the Odroid C4. Unfortunately, those don't power over USB Type-C, so I had to have a separate power cable connected to those, but it does work over HDMI with the next dock. Alright, so here it is, Raspberry Pi 4 running Raspbian, we got the trackpad and the keyboard working, everything seems to be functioning pretty well. If you need an extra USB, you can use the USB on the right hand side of the next dock itself. You can connect different peripherals to it, like external hard drives, but we do have plenty of USBs on the Pi right now anyway. I have seen a couple people complaining about the slowness of the pointer using the trackpad, but this can be adjusted in Raspbian and many other operating systems. Another person was pointing out that it was pretty slow inside a DeX, and personally, I didn't notice a big difference there. I mean, I think it worked fine like it was. Now, I do a lot of work with the Raspberry Pi, and this has been a lifesaver in the last two weeks. Since I've had this, I've used it several times, and it's come in really, really handy. We have portable power, display, trackpad, keyboard, and extra I.O. for the Raspberry Pi. So if I ever need to carry my Raspberry Pi somewhere, which actually happens a lot, this is definitely coming with me instead of a portable monitor and a couple extra cables that I gotta plug into the wall. I also tested an Intel NUC. This is an i7 Intel NUC, and the only thing I needed to plug in was the USB Type-C on the back here. This one actually supports Thunderbolt, but it does video out. And I also had to plug in the power for the unit itself because it's 19 volts, and this just won't put out 19 volts. So another thing I wanted to test was the iPad Pro. This is the 11 inch 2020. I got it to work one time. After unplugging it, it would not work again. Now on their website, they do not officially support iOS and I completely understand why, but it was weird that I was actually able to get it to work. 
Trackpad and keyboard also worked at the same time, but every time I've tried so far, I cannot get it to display. It just keeps popping up and going back out. But like I mentioned, they do not claim to support iOS. This was something that I was really interested in and I was super excited that it worked the first time. So I figured, hey, it does work with the iPad Pro, but unfortunately I just can't replicate it. But there is a way to make it work for sure. You will need a different adapter. It's a USB type C to HDMI. I use this for my tablets and everything to hook it up to my big screen. So what I have here is the iPad plugged into that adapter. In turn, that's going to HDMI on the next dock, and I have another USB going to that adapter. I mean, it's a mess getting this set up, but as you can see, it does work, and we do have support on the trackpad and keyboard. It's just really not worth it in the end. The final thing I tested was the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. So if you have the Tab S4, the S5e, or the S6, it's going to work fine. You can either just mirror the Android screen, or you can turn on DeX. So yeah, the next dock 2 is an awesome little accessory for your phone, single board computer, or small PC, but you definitely need a use case scenario when you're going into something like this. Personally, mine would be for these single board computers to make them really portable, and I really do use Samsung DeX quite a bit, so this just makes it a lot easier. All I need is that one cable, plug it in, got my keyboard, trackpad, and I'm charging my phone at the same time. So yeah, for me, this is something that I will definitely use on a regular basis, and since I've had it in my possession for about the last two weeks, I've used it several times with Raspberry Pi projects, and it's actually saved me a lot of time because I didn't have to go up and plug this all into my big screen TV or even a monitor. It's got that battery built in, display, keyboard, trackpad, and that's all I need to get my Raspberry Pi up and running and do whatever I want on it. The keyboard feels great, the trackpad performs well, and I love the size of it. I hate these small trackpads. Something like this is perfect for me, and the screen is absolutely beautiful. It's only 1080p, but that IPS display is super sharp and it's very bright. The base price of the next dock that you saw in this video is $250. Now that might sound like a lot, but if you get on Amazon and try to find a portable monitor with a built-in battery, you're going to spend just as much or even more. I have seen some for around $230, but the quality is not going to be great. And remember, with this thing here, we have a beautiful IPS 1080p display, an awesome trackpad, and a great keyboard built in for the same price as one of those portable monitors with a built-in battery. So I don't think the price is way too high like a lot of people have been saying. But like I mentioned, it's definitely not for everybody, and this was just my review on it. I personally really like it, and that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you watching. I'm going to leave a few links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.